So that was awesome. Um, great way to start a Saturday. A little bit of Sichuan opera. Now in Sichuan and Chengdu, opera and tea have a really intertwined history. So now we've done the opera part, let's go and find some tea. Tea is a huge and daunting topic spanning thousands of years. So to get a handle on it, we're meeting our Chinese teacher Stephanie in her favorite tea house. She's going to treat us to a traditional tea ceremony. But before that, a good place to start is the word for tea itself. Cha. So, tea, when we have the tea, we can feel the taste of the nature. Okay? This is the meaning behind the cha character. So good. <laughs> In ancient Taoist wisdom, the role of tea was to connect people with nature and their environment, allowing them to surrender their thoughts, feelings, and desires to the cosmos. But in recent times, tea is more about building connections with each other. Good, so we just got out. I realized we've just been drinking tea for about four hours. You can really get in the zone in a place like that. Just chatting and refilling the tea over and over again. And it's a really good way to spend an afternoon and not think about time. In 1909, over 450 tea houses were recorded in a city, almost as many as the number of streets. While times have changed, Chengdu is still China's tea capital. Okay, we're about to step foot in Heming Cha Guan, the oldest and most famous tea house in downtown Chengdu. Let's go. So we've got the different teas that are on offer here. I like the sound of bamboo leaf green tea. And maybe, well, Heming organic red tea must be their speciality. What do you think you're going to have? Speciality. Hey. <laughs> Pretty earthy and a little bit bitter. 
if you notice, Joe held his like this, his cup. But for a woman, you take off the lid, scrape away the tea leaves, and then give it a drink. Very elegant. Traditionally, tea houses were also labour markets in which workers of every description would gather to offer their services. The most famous of these is Song Dynasty tradition of Tao Ar ear picking. It's exciting to see that this is still alive and kicking in the Chengdu tea houses. How do you feel after your uh, ear cleaning massage experience? Very relaxed. Cool. Very zen. Okay, let's go. So I'm out near Qingcheng Mountain looking for tea and in Sichuan this was the first place that tea was systematically grown and produced um, and then distributed throughout China so this is a good place to look for tea it's not the right time of year though it's so hot too hot for tea uh, spring is the best time to find tea so really hope for the tea gardens open but we shall see have a look at this hill the discovery of tea four and a half thousand years ago has been credited with advancing chinese society an idea which has been exported to other countries around the world Seeing these ordinary looking plants up close, it's hard to believe the role they've played in world history. But almost every culture that's encountered tea has ended up embracing it as a part of everyday life. It's been truly amazing to visit its birthplace. I'm on my way back to Chengdu's outskirts to meet Joe. We're heading to our final tea house, Guanyin Pavilion, whose owner sees tea as much more than just a commodity. The manager, Li Chiang, bought this tea house when he was 30 and instead of renovating it, kept it in its original state. 
While tourists come here to photograph a rare remnant of old China, for the locals it's an important social space. So we've got some communist propaganda on the wall. There's photos of all the local characters, such as the pipe maker carving. And yeah, it's really weird. It's got a kind of feeling of a living museum. One of the more surreal places we've been to because you've got the locals who get charged just a few pennies to sit here all day drinking tea. And then you've got all the tourists who are the real uh, money makers filming them and kind of um, crowding around them. And right now while I'm talking to you, there's actually a guy filming me or filming you, filming me, doing a piece of camera. <laughs> it's a very meta experience. Li Chang explained up front that the village locals pay only one RMB for tea, while visitors pay 10 RMB. While this seemed a bit strange at first, after speaking with him we realised it was a necessity to pay the bills while keeping the tea house accessible for the older generation. We respected both his creativity and care for the local community. As the morning tea rush dies down and some delicious vegetables are brought over from Li Chang's son's restaurant across the road, we realised that this was the perfect end to our mini adventure into the world of tea.